It's 8.38, October 23rd, 8.38 in the morning. A couple things occurred to me when I was working on my video this morning about these two cards, tarot number one and tarot number seven, the magician and the chariot. I wanted to add a couple more things to what I was saying about these. The first thing I noticed well, first of all, I, the, the magician is surrounded by roses, and rose is one of the words that they use to refer to Chris and I, or the sun. They talk about us as roses. But he's also got lilies beneath him. And uh, since I've studied the fleur de lay, I now understand that it's supposed to be a stylized lily. So I want to point that out. And when Kurt Cobain played his unplugged show, he surrounded himself by lilies. I think lily are usually associated with um, funerals and things like that. The other thing I want to point out are the numbers together, one and seven, which together make 17. That's the star. So I do think these two are connected to the star in the terms of, um, uh, also in terms of celebrity. And I think that this above and below thing is connected to celebrity as well. Also, if you put the Roman numerals together, you get one line on the right and two lines on the left with this V in the middle. So that's another thing I've noticed. These two lines, two vertical lines, are connected to Chris and I. They seem to be connected to the twins. They're connected to the number 11, where one line obviously is connected to the magician, number one. I looked a little closer. <laughs> Some of the imagery on the cards as well. Um, and specifically, I noticed that both cards seem to be related to the Baphomet. On this card, you see the, Im the Baphomet Im imagery on the um, Sphinx, the breasts. Now, I don't know if the Egyptian Sphinxes actually have breasts on them. I can't remember, I, but the Baphomet does, and to me, that's what it looks like. Also, looking closer at their tails... Um, the tails form these loops or arches, and then they loop the tails underneath their front legs, and they're playing with their tail almost like a a cat would play with a toy of some sort. The Baphomet imagery on here is the pentagram and then the hand signs, one above and one below, or above and below. So the Baphomet, as it, these cards were published in 1910, so you can figure they were um, being made around 1900, around the turn of the century. The Baphomet, I think the modern version of it dates to the 1850s. And I just wanted to point this out. So they call this sign sigil of Baphomet and there's all this history and stuff that I'm not going to, to me it's almost like reading Masonic history. You can just pretty much expect to be bullshitted. You know, you can pretty much expect most of it to be bullshit. Excuse my language, but I mean it's, there's really no other word for it. That's what it is. Um, you get a lot more information if you just look at the symbols and see how they occur in patterns. That's how you figure out what they mean. You know, I mean, it does help to to read what people have to say about them. And but what I've found in this, it basically is the same as Freemasonry in that the least reliable people to give you information about what these symbols mean are the people who use the symbols. So that tells you that they're hiding the real meaning of this stuff. You have to look at the patterns. And with all this coded language, it's certainly not impossible to lie. I see that, especially with the what what Catherine Horton calls cartel signaling, which is this 
language that underlies our explicit language, what people do with their hands and their mouths and their eyes and things like that when they're talking, it's certainly possible to lie even with the, the language below the language. But most of the time people seem to use these symbols, at least, Uh, sound sabotage. I've got my windows closed and everything. That truck that's making a bunch of noise out there says tree solutions on it. And, um, yeah, they chose to make a whole bunch of noise just as soon as I had a minute to make a recording, but that's okay. We'll work through it. So, I just want to point out this BBC thing, okay? We, I understand that the press feels like they have to um, hide things, but uh, and Catherine Horton referred to the BBC as MI6. So they have this they have this article called Decoding the Symbols on Satan's Statue. And the statue is a uh, satanic church wanted to put up and so forth and so on. It's got the twins represented by two children. And, of course, the twins are represented all over this iconography. But um, that's okay. Probably also is a symbol of pedophilia. Um or excuse me, child exploitation. Uh, it's a bunch of lies and lies and lies and lies and lies and lies and lies because you have to look at what Satanists do, not what they say. But I just want to point out that this is not decoding. When you just listen to what people tell you something means and you just take it at face value, you can't call that decoding. All you can say, you know, I don't know what you call it, but this is just fiction, as far as I'm concerned. So I don't think our, our news media should be print, printing fictions. So, bye bye Okay. So, oops. bye 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 We can bring that one back, because we want to look at the symbols. There's this drawing, and then there's another drawing that I see a lot, which is this one. The major difference that I notice, and looked at them, compared them real close, but the major difference I notice is the torch is not lit on this version. And it's pretty, uh, it might even be the same thing, so I don't know why one has a lit torch and the other one doesn't. But just looking at the... Um, symbolism in generally speaking there's the crescent moon and there's a dark crescent moon down here the legs are crossed in an X shape with the left leg in front cloven hooves He's on top of what appears to be a globe or a, a sphere and then um, it's got female breasts. He's got, um, now the torch, the thing that the torch is in looks like a fleur de lay shape. When the torch isn't set, it looks almost like a, a hooded figure, like a Ku Klux Klan kind of hood with the arms raised up. It's a kind of a sp creepy, spooky looking, like almost like a figurine rising up. That's what it looks like to me. Then there's the goat head, and on the forehead is this, uh, what they call a sigil. I'm not sure what sigil means, but I think it's interesting how close it is to the word sibyl. And um, sibyl is a oracle, and sibyl is also the name of one of Chris's ancestors that's in that um, Plantagenet family line. There was a, I'm not sure what the word is, a mistress or a concubine to, uh, I can't remember which king. Um, so that might be something I'll look at later. And then Sybil is a, is a Greek oracle that was described in a play called Satyricon. And it also is um, that phrase from the Satyricon or a phrase from the Satyricon relating to the Sybil is the way that T.S. Eliot opened the poem called The Wasteland. 
this symbol though, if you look at the symbol itself, it's a pentagram, but it's a, it's drawn in a specific way, so it's kind of an endless loop of pentagram. So it's got an arrow pointing up. If you take away the arrow pointing down, it looks like the Star Trek thing that they wore on their shirts in Star Trek. So in a lot of ways it's similar to the hexagram because it's got an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down, but with the pentagram it's more like two there's there's it's a well, it's a different shape obviously. You can sit and, you know, try to decode it, but I think the the relevant parts are, are the fact this does not end. This isn't continuous loop. So it might be interpreted as the idea of keeping this five, it's five points in this continuous loop. And um, so my research tells me that both the hexagram and the pentagram are connected to the seal of Solomon. And Solomon is the person who seems to be um, most central to the myths of Freemasonry. So this, to me, in so many ways, and I think historically is correct, it's a spin-off of Freemasonry, of the type of symbols used in Freemasonry. Then we have this covering over the goat legs here, and, you know, um, this phallic-type catechus coming up. And then this shield behind the catechus with this fish scale shapes, which I pointed out as a design element in that shot, the graduate with the leg. And I've noted that this is a, I did not know that this was um, part of the Baphomet at all, but that it was a Japanese design that I've been attracted to. I can even just sh show. So, um, you know, on my websites, I've chosen to use, and I've done this a lot over the years I've chosen to use this pattern. Now I just chose chose it because I had this web, website, I, I picked the domain Seastorm in 1999 and then I've always done sort of an, um, you know, frequently tried to evoke things that are sort of oceanic with my design elements kind of riffing off of that and you know it's it's evolved to this where it's not oceanic anymore but I'm using this design because to me it re it seems like shells or waves or something like that. And just pointing out that um, it seems like this is, I believe that this is possibly and maybe even very likely um, a type of mind control that's been done on me to where I'm attracted to certain things. I don't understand why I'm attracted to them and then I find out that these are design elements used in occult stuff connected to my situation. So I think that if you look at this, okay, what you see visually here is an arch, not unlike the arches and the tails of the of the cats here. But presumably underneath here it's a full ring, which represents the sun, but inside it are scales which could be from fish or lizards. And then we have the catechus and the snakes. And then on the top of the catechus, there's another ring. And I've puzzled about this a lot. And I looked up at one point catechus and medicine. Because normally, so catechus is, if you look it up, it's it's a symbol of um, Hermes or Merc I think Mercury is the other name of that god. I think it's worth looking at what this traditionally symbolizes and then talking about why it's ended up as a medical sign. Okay, through its use in astrology, alchemy, and astronomy has come to denote the planet and elemental metal of the same name, Mercury. It is said the wand would wake the sleeping and send the awake to sleep. Um, and Mercury was the messenger of the gods, guide of the dead and protector of merchants, shepherds, gamblers, liars, and thieves. So, I don't know if the BBC explained why he has a catechus in his pants, but, um, and oh, and look, it's like similar to the um, figure eight sign, too. But what I think, and then, and then there's this whole thing about why is the catechus used in medicine, and in fact, it appears 
Okay, there's actually somebody who wrote an entire textbook about that. So, when you start getting into why you see it in medical references, you you learn that it's supposed to be the rod of um, Asclepius. Not sure if that's how it's spelled or pronounced, especially in the United States. And the rod of Asclepius, even in itself, is a bit odd to use in medicine. And it seems like what they thought... Well, first of all, here's uh, U.S. military. I think that's worth noting, too, that it's also been used in the military. So we've got military, and we've got medicine, and we've got Satanism. So this is a <clears throat> the single serpent encircling the staff. Classically, a rough-hewn, knotty tree limb so not unlike the wands in tarot it appears that well here's okay here's that's an interesting I didn't understand that one I didn't know about this one so it shows the snake around the tree in the Garden of Eden I but it seems that there was a way of removing worms from people that involved wrapping them around a stick and that they thought is why it became a medical symbol. Now, there's a doctor or somebody who's written this giant uh, textbook, or, yeah, a, a textbook about this whole issue here, Catechus versus Staff of Asclepius. But um, when you have to write a giant textbook that costs almost a hundred bucks to explain, it makes me think that there's too much protesting going on as far as you know like this is the red herring the difference between the two snakes and the one snake well the two snakes of course is like twins and then there's also the wings on the catechus and um, this this top but the point that I'm trying to make I guess more or less is that you can see in the symbology in a lot of medical symbology especially old medical symbology that the situation with you know here's here's this disc on top and the wings, which is basically a sun disc, that um, doctors have been at the core of this. The medical profession has been at the core of this since forever, for centuries. Because doctors were, you know, we haven't had psychology that long. Um, and medicine was sort of a shamanistic art connected with alchemy and alchemy was connected with the occult and um, you know so there was a big mix-up of science and religion back then and so these doctors have come into this they've been grandfathered into this like I said I think Chris's family Chris's family line I believe has been in this um, hellhole <laughs> since the 1400s and if his family line's been in there that long, it's possible that mine has too, although I don't know. I think that's the point that I'm trying to make, is this is so ingrained in medicine that it's just over, you know, when it comes to this situation, the doctors seem to, um, and not just doctors, but everybody around the doctors. Now, the catechist is connected to things like, um, you know, I think of it as being connected to finance and things like that. I think the the consensus is that this whole using the catechus rather than the the single snake rod is a mistake that just got repeated over and over but I kind of feel like so what why why did they even use a snake wrapped around a staff to begin with to represent medicine when doctors obviously do a lot of different things if in fact it's about wrapping a worm around a stick to remove a worm from a person um, why that thing specifically, especially considering the con connection between worms and monarch symbolism. The doctors are removing the worms. And then that reminds me again of the Sylvia Plath poem where she's in the hospital after a suicide attempt and she says they had to pick the worms off me like sticky pearls. Sticky is, the word sticky contains the word stick. So she's actually talking about the stick and the worms. So I think she actually knew that, in fact, that, that that symbol was connected to removing worms with a stick. 
so this is where me this is what this is why medicine at least in my case um, when they run up against the abuse that happens as a result of people um, being involved in this these shenanigans they won't admit what's really going on they won't admit my face has been burnt with microwaves they call it a rash they won't they won't admit that there are um, non-consensual implants all around in my body they won't admit when um, I end up in the emergency room well no here's the weird thing is you know I if I end up in the emergency room or the doctor or something like that uh, with a, a medical condition that's been created by somebody participating in this particular crime it's not that they won't treat me but sometimes they won't treat me for what is really going on but they won't address the root causes of what's going on and in situations where something has happened badly enough so that um, I am very distressed for example when my heart was attacked a couple weeks ago or when I fell in the shower and was injured from a mind control situation um, they seem to um, it's one of those things where the response isn't doesn't seem appropriate like they seem to um, belittle isn't the right word but um, minimize minimize the situation I think it's a defense mechanism you know because to actually um, to actually see the situation in, in its entirety would be um, upsetting and they have to do their job but um, you know for a while doctors took a hermetic oath that goes way back and um, it's interesting because I've seen these different forms of the hermetic oath in this form it looks like a double T I'm, I'm not hermetic oath excuse me <laughs> Maybe that was a Freudian slip, a Hippocratic oath. Yeah, I guess they do take a Hermetic oath, don't they? <clears throat> but should they? So this is the Hippocratic oath, written in the form of a double T in Greek. I've seen another version of the Hippocratic oath written in the form of a cross. A more recent version, like from the early 1900s. But um, my understanding is that the core of the Hippocratic Oath is to do no harm. Now, I know that doctors have, you know, people connected, people, that has to be. Here it says the Hippocratical Oath, but I don't even think they take the Hippocratic Oath anymore. So I just, I'm just, I don't know what to make of it exactly, except I have to say that um, there can't be any doubt that the doctors are not deeply involved in this, and I think there should be... a I think we should question this. And I mean, I'm talking about this is monarch symbolism. The twins and the worm and the stick. This is monarch symbolism. So he's got the monarch symbol where his penis is, right? And then in that statue, they've got two children walking right up to his lap. I wonder if the BBC actually mentioned that, the fact that two children are walking right up to his lap while he has this thing sticking out of his pants. And then he has on his arm, so he's got two fingers pointing up and two fingers pointing down. And in this one, you also see his thumb. The thumb might be poking out here on top. So my understanding is that when the thumb points up, if it points up on the right hand, it's signifying um, oppression from the right or pressing down, like a you know pressing down thumbs. And then on the left, if your thumb is pointing down, then your thumb is you know you're not. So if your if your thumb is showing pr pointing up, if it's on the right hand, it's the right side, and the left hand it's the left side. And um, that right and left difference, I think, goes back to the met myth of Set versus Horus, and we are put in the place of Horus, and the right side is placed in the um, position of set and the right side seems to be um, connected with finance they at least are very wealthy and the left side is deliberately kept down by the right side the n words on the arms I don't really know you know this seems to be related to the word coagulate so something that bunches together in a group perhaps 
and then I don't know if this is solve or solve or what, but you know maybe it means solve, like solving something. I don't know. The long goat horns, and then the two fingers. So what I when I read about it, it says as above, so below. But why is it two fingers? And I remember somebody saying that when they worked at Disneyland, they were told to always point with two fingers instead of one, which I think is weird. But possibly two fingers rep represents the twins again. Um, so one's going up into the air and the other one's going down. So it's really about division and power and wielding power over people. And to me, the forehead is a place where something is, um, you know, when something's on the forehead, other people can see it, but maybe you can't, possibly. But um, to me, this signifies this endless sort of looping around of keeping a situation in stasis so that changes can't be made for the better. That's what I feel like. And that the seal of Solomon, so it's it's sealed. Um, but I would say of this, when I look at this symbol, the thing that's always troubled me the most has been this catechus in the pants. <laughs> and it's troubles me about medicine. And it troubles me about other things that didn't trouble me in the past. So, you know, it's caused me to be in a position where I feel that I can't trust institutions and people that I used to trust. I have to vote now. I used to not have a problem with voting and I'm I'm actually repulsed by the idea of voting now and it has to do with me trying to get help from certain people that now I'm, I'm faced with they're gonna be on the ballot and uh, you know I'm talking about Democrats and um, or a Democrat and I think this is bad you know this is not a good situation this twin stuff and this division and this uh, oppression of you know oppression of people who are already struggling is what this is really